Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Kenosha, Wisconsin, our worship service today. I'm Pastor Cindy Osson. We begin the service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come together today, we are aware that we are a broken people. We have not done the things that we should and we have not done what God has always intended for us. And so we come before God to confess our sins. Holy and gracious God, at, at times, times we, we feel, feel so frail, frail and, and fragile, fragile, getting blown about by this pandemic, by bad news, by our own short tempers and failings. You call us to hold fast to what is good, but so often we flounder, unable to find that solid thing that will center us again. Help us to see you as our center. Help us to cling to the good that you create in the world. Help us to set aside all our jealousies and prejudices, all of our betrayals and lies all that adds to the world's hurt. Help us to grow even more into Christ's likeness, that we will bear his love and truth to the world. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. God loved the world so much that God sent Jesus to come into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are God's child. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh 
my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh shall drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, amid all, all the, the turmoil, turmoil and changes, changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rock of defense. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom, comfort those in distress, and grant us courage and hope to face the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first, the first reading is from the fourth chapter of Philippians, beginning with the fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord always, Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the sixth chapter of Matthew, beginning with the fifth verse. Praise to you, O Lord. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that by hearing we may believe, and by believing we may obey your will. Reveal to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I recently read a story from Barbara Brown Taylor from her book, Preaching the Terrors. She wrote, Several summers ago, I spent three days on a barrier island where loggerhead turtles were laying their eggs. One night while the tide was out, I watched a huge female heave herself up on the beach to dig her nest and empty herself into it while slow, salt tears ran from her eyes. Afraid of disturbing her, I left before she had finished her work, but returned the next morning to see if I could find the spot where her eggs lay hidden in the sand. What I found instead were her tracks, only they led in the wrong direction. Instead of heading back to sea, she had wandered into the dunes, which were already hot as asphalt in the morning sun. A little ways inland I found her, exhausted and all but baked, her head and flippers caked with dry sand. After pouring water on her and covering her with sea oats, I fetched a park ranger, 
who returned with a jeep to rescue her. As I watched in horror, he flipped her over on her back, wrapped tire chains around her front legs, and hooked the chains to the trailer hitch on his jeep. And then he took off, yanking her body forward so fast that her open mouth filled with sand and then disappeared underneath her as her neck bent so far I feared it would break. The ranger hauled her over the dunes and down onto the beach. I followed the path from the prow of her shell cut in the sand. At ocean's edge, he unhooked her and turned her right side up again. She lay motionless in the surf as the water lapped at her body, washing the sand from her eyes and making her chin shine again. Then a perilously large wave broke over her, and she lifted her head slightly, moving her back legs as she did. As I watched, she revived. Every fresh wave brought her life back to her until one of those that was tight enough to find a foothold and push off back into the water that was her home. Watching her swim slowly away and remembering her nightmare ride through the dunes, I noted that it is sometimes hard to tell whether you are being killed or being saved by the hands that turn your life upside down. Do you feel like your life has been turned upside down? We live in strange times, anxious times. And so what do you do? As we shelter at home, there are people who have confessed to me they feel so helpless, like they should be doing something more. One woman told me, you know, I'm used to helping people. I'm used to going and doing for things for them. And yet I have to be at home and I can't do anything. And I reminded her, that she had the greatest gift that she could give, not just her friends, but for the world. She had the gift of prayer. She could pray for others. She could pray for the world. She could pray for this nation. What a gift we have been given. When we started this Safer at Home, I started writing a morning and evening prayer along with pictures that I had taken over the years. And it's been so powerful for me personally. As I think about what to pray for in the morning and at night, I think about all those who are growing through so much. And I think about the people and their struggles. And that's when I realize too, how much I know but how much even more I don't know of their struggles and what they're going through in their life. Some have asked, how do I pray? Do I have to have the right words? Just simply talk. Talk as you talk to a friend. I had a woman a few years ago who tell, told me that she envisioned Jesus would sit in the rocking chair in her living room. And she would talk to him as she would talk to a friend. And when the times would come that her grief was too much and no words would come, she would sit in the rocking chair and envision his arms around her and with the Holy Spirit, praying with sighs or groans too deep for words. This week, I wanted to talk about prayer. And I know it, prayer can be a tough thing. When we pray for things and they happen, it's amazing. And what happens if you pray for something and it doesn't? This past week, as I've studied more about it, I came across the Anglican priest, Samuel Wells who's currently the vicar of St. Martin of the Fields in central London. And he had a great way of looking at prayers that really was helpful to me. 
Well said, there are basically three kinds of prayers. The first, he said, is the resurrection prayer. Those are the prayers that we pray asking for a miracle from God. It's essentially like this, he says. God, we have seen your great power when you raised Jesus from the dead. Now by that same power, I call on you to heal my friend from cancer and restore her to health. I've prayed those kind of miracle prayers countless times in hospitals, in ERs, over the phone, when meeting with people after a diagnosis, when hearing of others who have friends or loved ones who are struggling. And I have to say, I have witnessed some miracles. Was it because my prayers were so good? No, not at all. I don't know why miracles work, but many times they didn't. My prayer was not answered how I wanted things to do. And I don't know, and I don't understand this side of the kingdom. But then that leads to the second type of prayer Wells talked about. He said it's the prayer of incarnation. He describes this prayer with these words. It's a call for God to be with your loved one. It's a recognition that Jesus was broken, desolate, on the brink of death, and that is all a part of what it means to be human. Part of the deal that you sign on to the day you're born. Our bodies and minds are fragile, fail sometimes, and sometimes feeble. And there is no guarantee that life is going to be easy, comfortable, fun, or happy. The prayer of incarnation says, God, in Jesus you shared our pain, our foolishness, and our sheer bad luck. You took on our flesh with all its needs and clumsiness and weakness. Visit my friend, my loved one, and give them patience to endure what lies ahead. Hope for every trying day and companions to show them your love. I've prayed this prayer a lot, this incarnation prayer, that God, who created the heavens and the earth, yet knows every one of us, and through Jesus knows what it is to be a human, to weep when we hear that loved ones die, this is the God who has not abandoned us, but is there in the midst of our frailties and failings. When we struggle, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we have a Lord who says, I am with you, and I will not leave you, and I will not forsake you. God with us. Emmanuel. And it's especially in times like this that I need to know that our God is not distant and uncaring, but is there in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of this pandemic. God is with us. From us sheltering at home to those who are working in the front lines God is with us and will not forsake us. But Wells suggests a third prayer, a kind of prayer in times of need or in distress. And it's a prayer of transfiguration or transformation. This is a prayer that asks God to give us, our friend, our loved one, a vision of a reality beneath and beyond what we can understand. Wells says that this is a prayer that in our times of bewilderment and confusion asks that God might reveal to us 
a deeper truth into life than we've ever known. Reasons for living beyond what we've ever imagined and an awareness of grace and love that we've never imagined before. Wells says, maybe this is our real prayer for our friends, our loved ones, ourselves. A prayer for God to make this trial and tragedy, this problem and pain, a glimpse of God's glory, a window into God's world, even into God's heart. God, let me see your face, sense the mystery in all things, and walk with angels and saints. Bring me closer to you in this crisis than I have ever been. Make this a moment of truth. Touch me. Raise me. And make me alive like never before. Preacher and teacher Fred Craddock talked about this kind of transformational care. When he found out that his sister Frida was dying of cancer. And he said he had gone back to visit and knew that the time there would be the last time he would see her. He said, she asked me to help her prepare a funeral service, which I found extremely, extremely difficult to do. When we finished preparing the service, she asked me to pray. And this is what I did. In my mind, I located myself straight in the front of the throne. Before I closed my eyes, I wanted to make sure that I was in front of the throne of God because what I wanted was God on the throne. God the power. God the Almighty. God in whom all things are possible. And Craddock wrote, When I had positioned myself in front of the throne, I bowed my head and I prayed for her relief and for her healing as intensely and sincerely as I could. And I closed with Amen. I lifted my head, opened my eyes, and there in front of me was Jesus Christ, the bleeding lamb. Now who wants that? I wanted the God of power. But there he was, God in Christ, the one who identifies with us and suffers with us. For Craddock, the prayer for a miracle became a prayer of transfiguration, a glimpse into a deeper truth, a new reality. And indeed, the very face of God. His sister died, but for Fred Craddock, there was healing and new hope. For he knew that his sister had full and final healing and new hope. We have a God who is not a remote God not a God who stands back, but we have a God with us, Emmanuel, who gives us this gift of prayer and says, come to me, talk to me, anytime, anywhere, any place. Your words don't have to be eloquent. Your words also may not even come but come to me and tell me what is going on in your life. Pray for yourself. Pray for others. Pray for this nation. Pray for this world. Pray for that which you know, but you can also pray for that which you don't know. We have been given a gift, a most powerful and amazing gift. 
to be able to talk to a God who knows us and loves us and says, I am with you in the midst of all of this. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most holy God, you are the source of all goodness, wisdom, mercy, and life. We need you. And this isn't just about our private fears or personal concerns, nor only our church or community or nation. This is about every person on the face of this planet, how vulnerable we all are, how interconnected we are, not just by social media or party affiliation or various, various identity labels. We're bound together by our common humanity and through that, by the possibility of infection, illness, and even death by a virus. So Lord, we ask that you would bind us together by something even greater and stronger. Bind us together in a fellowship deeper than our differences and stronger than death. Bind us together in Christ, crucified and risen from the dead for the salvation of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow your spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might upon all who take counsel for the nations in this time of crisis. Give them every spiritual, moral, intellectual, and social resource they need to act for the good of the people entrusted to their care. Let them be courageous, competent, collaborative, and compassionate as they ponder what course to take. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the brilliant and dedicated scientists 
who seek to understand the infection's nature, to slow or prevent its spread, and to mitigate the suffering it causes. Thank you for doctors, nurses, and everyone from housekeepers to cooks, from dialysis and inhalation technicians to speech therapists to emergency room personnel who are truly risking their lives for the sake of all. Bless and strengthen them. Keep them safe from all harm and grant them rest when they need it for their own health's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We plead on behalf of the many people who are quarantined and isolated because of exposure to the virus, for everyone who is already ill, and for those who are at the greatest risk of severe illness or death. Hide them under the shadow of your wings and grant them healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most gentle and gracious Father, we pray for families with children in these difficult days. Some have only one parent. Some are already stressed out from things ranging from physical abuse to drugs, from illness of body, mind, or spirit to financial problems. Lord, some of those households will be like pressure cookers. And the children might suffer most when it goes. Let your spirit brood over those troubled waters. Give us eyes to see and hearts to respond as helpfully and as often as we can. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, be with those who struggle. Those with anxiousness, grief. Those who struggle with financial hardship and new diagnoses. Bring them your hope and your healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We know that other needs continue to be urgent, dear Father. We ask the Spirit's help in remembering them before you. And for the sake of your dear Son, we pray that you may heed all our prayers and graciously answer them in accordance with your will to your glory, and for the welfare of your people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor, to bring you hope and comfort and peace this day. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today. We pray that all will go well. Be smart. Stay safe.